Press. I'm an astrophysicist and this is how long does the star stay as a white dwarf. So a white dwarf is a phase of the stages of the death of a star. Generally, like the, the less massive stars uh, die as a red giant and then contract to a white dwarf. So for stars that, are ma that have a mass less than eight times the mass of the sun, you end up with a white dwarf, uh, which is like exposed core um, of the star. So let's look at the HR diagram and see where the white dwarf uh, plays part. So here we have the main sequence, and this is where most of the stars live their life. This is when they're being powered by fusion. And the, generally speaking, we have two axes here, and we plot the temperature versus the luminosity. So temperature versus the power that the star is giving. So here we have, in this region, we have the really hot, but very uh, dim, so not very bright. Over here, we have the blue supergiants, which are very hot and very, very, uh, they're doing a lot of power. So they're very large and they're very luminous. And then towards this end, we have the reddish, smaller stars that are uh, very cool and they're not very bright. And over here, we have the red giants, which is the, fa the stage before a white dwarf, which is very cool because it has expanded its outer layers. So the temperature has dropped, but because it's so large, it actually, looks very bright in the sky. So the luminosity is actually very bright. So over here we have the white dwarfs, and over here we have the red giant. So our star is a G2 class star. It will be over here, and towards the end of the star, it runs out of fuel, so it's no, it can no longer support itself through fusion. It will become a red giant, so it will puff out the outer layers, it will cool down, it will get very bright because it's very large, and then it's going to eject um, the outer layers and you're going to be left over with like the exposed core of the sun. So at this point, it's going to turn into a white dwarf. So what will happen is that the, the core is very hot, but it's because it's so small, because now you only have the core left over, it's not very bright. So then you move down to the white dwarf stage. Now, the white dwarf stage is no longer producing any energy. Now what's happening is that it's going to lose the heat. So it's going to radiate the heat out. So there are two methods of cooling. We have radiation. And then we have neutrino cooling. Now this process can take a very, very long time. And I'm talking about billions of years. Um, this becomes a hard time to say how many, how exactly how long it's going to take for it to cool down because there's also other things that slow down the cooling process such as crystallization. So sometimes you form crystals which is slow down the energy output of the white dwarf therefore your uh, cooling process slows down. But generally speaking we have seen uh, white dwarfs that are 8 billion years in the process of cooling. So generally speaking it's a very very long time. Um, and it's in the range of billions of years. And this will depend on the type of cooling process that the white dwarf is going through, uh, what size does the star was to begin with, uh, and so forth. My name is Aileen Perez, I'm an astrophysicist, and this is how long will a star stay as a white dwarf. Mm -hmm.